Do you know the, Mupp the have you heard of the Muppets? And they used to have like a little person singing. Do, 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 do. Pachakucha. Do, 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 do. Pachakucha. Do, 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 do. Help them out. Pachakucha is a Japanese word for chit chat and is the name of a presentation format created in Japan in 2003 by Astra Klein and Mark Dyson, two architects looking for a way people could share their work quickly and simply in public. Since then, the idea spread to over 700 cities around the world. At every Pecha Kucha night, creative thinkers come together and share their ideas with only 20 images shown for 20 seconds each. Pecha Kucha, a fast fun format. Find a location, join the conversation. Hi everyone, I'm very excited to speak to all of you today about my work around global citizen identity development and how that relates to service learning specifically in a Canadian college context. So this is a lot of the work that I've been working through over the past few years, but have also struggled with quite a bit. So for those of you that I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, I will reintroduce myself. Hi, my name is Stephanie Mueller-Toller. I am a learner, I'm an explorer, and I'm a dreamer. I call both Canada and Switzerland home. And during the week, you can also find me at Trent University in Peterborough, Ontario. So this topic of global citizen identity development really sparked for me at NASPA a few years ago in 2011. I was in a session about internationalization that was facilitated by Brass Camp and Chickering, like the Chickering. So I was just geeking out hardcore. And so in this session, they talked to us about, hey, did you know that you can all be global citizens? You never have to leave your own country? And my mind at this point is blown. No, 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 no. A global citizen is someone who has a passport full of stamps. It's someone who knows not one, not two, but three or four languages. And so that I knew at the end of that session and conference, I needed to go back home and really reevaluate how I identified as a global citizen. I needed to create a new map and a new understanding. And I did just that. I looked at and read so much about the competencies, the skills, the knowledge, the attitudes, and the way we look at global citizenship and I needed to contextualize it in an environment that we all know very, very well to understand what it meant for me. And so I looked at post-secondary education and spent a lot of time literally reading hundreds of vision statements, mission statements, and strategic plans from institutions all around the world. And it was awesome, I was humbled. These schools are talking about, hey, we're gonna develop global citizens, that's their mandate. And I thought that was awesome. I had so many questions. The first being, how on earth did you all get on the same page about what it means to be a global citizen? Spoiler alert, they didn't. So instead of focusing on the disconnect, I looked at the commonalities and thought there's got to be a thread that is woven throughout all these definitions. And there was. It was experiential learning. So we're going way back to 1930 with, Chick or with Kolb and with Dewey and looking at how institutions are recreating experiential learning opportunities where students really make meaning from their, from their experiences on their pathway towards global citizenship. Study abroad, that was one of the main ways research talked about that we can become global citizens. So many of these competencies that they develop are similar to those of being a global citizen. But that went against everything that Chickering and Brass Camp were talking about. This was going abroad, not looking in our own country. And so then I focused on service learning, but got frustrated very quickly because there were so many inconsistencies. What does it mean to serve? What's better, co-curricular or curricular? How does re critical reflection look like? And as I'm struggling, I'm talking to a lot of the students who then just are vulnerable to me in talking about their own obstacles on their path towards global citizenship. So prior to my time at Trent, which has been all of seven days, I was the director of residence life at Campus Living Centers and had worked with over 19 of the 24 colleges in Ontario. So I've spent a lot of time talking to college students and they have been very honest to me about two main obstacles. The first being time. A lot of the service learning opportunities that exist, at least in Ontario right now, are curricular learning opportunities. And for a college student that's only there for a year or two doing welding or underwater skills or aviation, this is just not an opportunity for them right now. The second major challenge that students talked to me was about money. 
Some of these trips, especially the international ones, are thousands of dollars and just not accessible to students. And so I started thinking to myself, as educators, are we creating these pathways towards global citizenship that is not accessible to all of our students? Are we creating more barriers and boundaries than actual bridges? And when it comes to service learning and social justice with such a huge part of that, why are we not doing more of this work at home? We live, or at least some of us do, in one of the most diverse, multicultural, beautiful, awesome countries in this world. Let's do, thank you. Let's do more of this work at home. And so I knew then that we needed to start digging, creating, and implementing something new and innovative. And that's when a fellow residence life coordinator really stepped up and said, hey, I'm going to create not one, but two service learning opportunities that will be accessible to all of our students. So these were not one week alternative break trips. These were trips that, or these were experiences that lasted over four months where students can engage in critical reflection, building relationships. They were funded as well and they really understood reciprocity. And so one trip went to the Dominican Republic, and the second trip went up to Moose Factory in Moosonee, which is in northern Ontario that worked with a group of Indigenous folks. And there they really had the time to educate themselves and explore their own identities and understand who they were over a longer period of time. And it was truly beautiful and special, and this is our third year doing these two trips. So a lot of you are probably thinking, that's awesome, Steph, but where do you fit into all of this? Well, hopefully you can tell I'm a little bit passionate about this. And so I thought, hey, if I'm gonna put this much time and effort into it, might as well make it my doctoral dissertation. So this is where I'm, thank you. <laughs> this is where I'm at. I'm going through the data and it's really fascinating, especially looking at some of the opportunities and development that students are making in terms of global citizenship in our own country. So before I end off, I just wanted to say thank you to all the practitioners that are doing this work that are creating pathways towards global citizenship. It's really, really hard. There's a lot of ambiguity and there's not a lot of resources and it's tough, but it is so important and so transformational. So I challenge all of you that are doing this work, look at the opportunities that you're creating and make sure that they're available to each and every single one of our students. Like I said before, this work is so important and, no, and so transformational. The work we're doing in terms of developing global citizens is changing our world. Thank you very much. Thank you.